Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that, unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is politics done right. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics on Radamic Berto Will is your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show today. We are going to have a great show. As usual, we are going to have a great show. We have a lot, a lot to talk about. Anyhow, welcome aboard, AVQ, also known as Michael Rodney, Nanette Bird Smith. Welcome aboard, Eric Hayes. Welcome aboard. Let's see, we get here. Michael Rodney, of course. Load us up again. Egberto, mind putting this on the screen, depending on what it is. Let's see what it says here. Uh, para ver, para ver, para ver. It says, now you know why voting for Republicans will condemn your daughter to fight in the same battles your grandmother won. That's a good one. I like the way they actually said that. I like that. Me gusta eso. All right, folks, here it goes on the screen. There it goes on the screen. All right, let's see what else we got here. Who else is here with us so far? Ah, we're kind of just getting started, just getting started. What is the program going to be about today? Well, today the program is how to get a big 2022 Democratic win. The GOP death policy is real. The truth about Afghanistan, which we were supposed to do yesterday, but kind of run low on time. There should be no... 2022 fear, but resolve for a big progressive win. And I mean that. I absolutely mean that. The data shows the Republican death policy is real. A veteran's Afghanistan's truth. That is what we're going to talk about today. We have a hell of a lot to talk about today. Anyhow, let's go ahead and start with El Señor Rudnan. He says, Supreme Court denies request to stop Texas six-week abortion ban with John Roberts and liberals dissenting. Control over women's bodies is what you get when you elect Republicans to office. That really what, that really what you want, conservatives? American Taliban. I'm glad you said that because that was one of the first subjects that I was going to talk about, right? You know, um, I remember back 10 or 12, 11 years ago, when Marcus Molitsas, uh, the, the owner and the creator of the Daily Coast, he created that uh, site called Daily Coast. And he wrote a book a few years ago called The American Taliban. And a lot of people got upset because he was referring to the American Taliban as the right-wing uh, sect of the Republican Party. And, you know, we should just say the Republican Party because the the establishment Republican Party has allowed the, the, their right flank to go berserk, like doing what they're doing in Texas, like doing what they're doing with, uh, with, with uh, the medical, medical health care, all that kind of stuff, right? So I, I, I was going to write a meme this morning, but I got very busy. I, you know, today's the day that I have two shows, both on KPFT as well as here. So um, I, I, I didn't get a chance to do the meme, but the meme was going to say something like this. I was going to enumerate everything that the GOP stands for right now based on their right flank and show how it's not all that dissimilar from the Taliban. Now, what is interesting is they like to say, yeah, but the Taliban, they pick up arms and they're dangerous. To which I always say, well, you know, we always knew that most of our mass killers, you know, those people that go that drive from Dallas to to uh, to El Paso to kill a whole lot of people, they were right wing thinkers. The guy who was in Las Vegas and killed the most people ever killed, I think, in in in, in a long time or whatever, now the right winger. I mean, so we can go from person to person to person of these killings and say right wing, but again, those were single person issues. So. We couldn't quite equate that together. 
But January 6th changed everything. It proved that we had a party that was willing to kill. It, because they did. It proved that we had a party willing to execute violence, willing to overthrow the government, willing to cause harm to our duly elected politicians. That's a fact. That's not in question. It is a statement of fact. So now when we say, or when Michael Rudnan puts out there, American Taliban, I don't see the difference. I honestly do not see the difference. Everything that, that there, they just look differently. One sits brown and the other isn't. But if you look at their actions, their actions is exactly equal to the Taliban. One. They are violent. Two, they want to take rights away from women and from people they don't like. Three, they care nothing about science. And I cannot, you know, those are the three majors. And you take a look at that and the right wing and you can't see the difference. So what I tell all my Republican friends right now is take back your party. And by the way, I am not, I am a progressive liberal. Progressive, progressive, progressive as they come. But my buddy, Matthew Dowd, uh, he's a fairly moderate Republican. He left the party. And several people are leaving the party because they have all acknowledged it is now the Taliban. And if you listen to David Jolly today, he will give you another explanation that we'll play a little bit later. So excellent pick up Michael Rudnan on that one. All right. Uh, the cost of post-9-11 wars exceed $8 trillion for U.S. The cost of war project housed at Brown University also estimated that 929,000 people have been killed in wars since September 11, 2001. Worth it? Hell no. Makes me wish we had spent this treasure on infrastructure investment and strengthening social safety nets. I tell you one country that saw... You know, we, we have examples, right? The nice thing about the world... Is the world is made up of a lot of countries. And these countries have history. And we chose to blow crap up. We chose to go all over the world and blow things up. China, a communist country, a capitalist communist country, showed that using their capitalist communist structure, they were able to Build big cities, big, build hundreds of hospitals in, in no time. Build other countries as they keep their dominion over those countries. They go into, they go into, uh, into Kenya, they build roads. They go into their own country, they build up Shanghai, they build up uh, 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 Xi'an, they build up all these big cities that make our cities look dumpy and old. While we were investing in war, enriching a few, China was out there building. Yesterday, I showed you the, the story about Intel and Taiwan. Taiwan has factories making all the semiconductors we need. The semiconductors, they make faster than our semiconductors using our technology that we, the American people, paid for. And they are monopolizing on that technology. Think about that. So we have perfect examples that actually show that our plutocracy is selling us out. And you have to be, by the way, I cover a whole lot of that in my book, How to Make America Utopia. Look, we, we have allowed our utopia, our wealthy, to sell out the country. They have us worrying about stupidity. Oh, like you've seen uh, Eric talking about, oh, bond this, bond that. Even the bond issue is the plutocracy ripping us off because they use our killers as sources of income. We monetize everything in this country. We monetize healthcare. We monetize food. We monetize, uh, we monetize crime. We monetize prisons. We turned everything into, into making a dollar for the few. 
and we do it in a manner and we convince a particular group of our people that it is okay. So before, we, we, if we really want to get serious about changing, we have to be honest with who we are. You know, China is not a good country. They're communists. They treat their people badly. But they're building stuff. We are blowing crap up. Next item from Rodnin. Outrageous and shameful. House panel approves $37.5 billion boost to Pentagon. Erika Fine, win, uh, without war, said, Every congressperson who voted for this should be ashamed after 14 Democrats joined with Republicans to approve the amendment. Two wings of the corporate party, the House Armed Service Committee, 4217 to approve ranking member Mike Rogers, Republican of Alabama, amendment uh, to the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal... You know, you know what is so funny? They never jump sides, right? Never do. They never do. Amazing. New York City debt toll is now 13, 14. Actually, I think it went up to 15 uh, debt. This was a one in 200 year rainfall. I've seen videos of people trapped in their cars. What I couldn't believe is the 11 foot rise in water, I think, in Rochester, New York. If, if I'm correct, correct me if I'm right or wrong, um, Rudnan. Uh, by the way, Rudnan, I saw a message from you on, on, on Facebook last night, and I checked because when you said you're. you're your internet was out. I wondered if that kind of flooding that was happening in Rochester was happening in your area as well. That's quite interesting what was going on there. Checking out on my peeps. Uh, COVID var MU COVID variant, which uh, Lambda, I mean COVID, not Lambda, uh, COVID variant, which scientists fear is resistant to vaccines detected in 39 countries or civilization failed to achieve herd immunity by vaccination. The unvaccinated became the variant factories until this happened. Lambda and, I don't remember what MOOS stands for, variants have emerged and spread around the world. We finally come to variants that may bypass vaccine protection. We are about to relive 2020 all over again for the fools among us. And it's not, and I want to correct that though, Rodin, uh, Rodin, because here's a problem. Even if we didn't have the crazies in America that are refusing to take the vaccine, the ones that are killing everybody else in America, even if we didn't have that, right? We have to remember that the rest of the world, because of our patent system and because we have not allowed people to leave to, to get vaccines throughout the world, our economic system, led by us as well, are responsible for having these viruses. So I am not going to put the blame solely on my Republican brothers and or my right wing brothers and sisters that are uh, that are that don't want to take the vaccine because they are a big problem. They are, but our government in general as well is a problem because what they should have done is nationalize the vaccine and gave given it to the world. Nationalize the vaccine. Create factories all over the world. And create that en masse and have everybody vaccinated around the world in 60 days. Could have been done. We could have done it. But you know what? For us, it's capitalism over everything else. Eric Hayes, I, hi, I, I, I'm, I, I, he, hi, here is a list of your bond victims. I saw the list. Big deal. I can show you a list of all the people who died from not having health insurance. That's okay. I can show you a list of a lot of dead people from a lot of things government has done. If you want to solve the bond problem, pass laws that prevent the bond industry from using criminals and killers as sources of income. You want to solve the problem? Do that. Uh, ABQ says, Eric Hayes, dog with a bone. Texas House approves bill reform uh, after removing amendment that would keep more, people, uh, more poor people in jail. Hey, remember, critical thinking... In the way uh, for the true victims not to make believe victim, I don't understand that sentence. Keep up the bad work uh, by the Dems and the president and you, w you won't win poop. Ha! Huh, that's a joke. Uh, why are you talking about bond when all the other stuff regarding women? You get the point, uh, Breach. They're trying to destroy a woman's right and we're talking stuff. Masticator says, American Taliban, if you believe that, you're a Marxist. No, I, I believe that I'm, and, uh, you know... Uh, I, I've been called worst. Uh, worse. Uh, Taliban now have American uniforms and equipment and can impersonate and kill at will who caused... It. You know what is so funny? 
the, the, the thinking process, here, here's what's so funny. Oh my God, the Taliban appropriated American, uh, American uniforms, so now people are going to think they're American soldiers and they can fool other people. <laughs> uh, you know, the rest of the world are not third graders. Because a Taliban person is wearing an American uniform doesn't make them an American soldier, nor is it going to be believed that he's an American soldier, you know? Uh, so those are, you know, those arguments that I hear on right-wing radio, on right-wing TV, it tells me that they think so little of you. And if you actually repeat what they say, hmm, maybe they're getting to you, but if that's the case, you should be concerned. Uh, Michael Rodney says, uh, Carlos Chapman said in 2019 about this, if a fetus is a person at six weeks pregnant, is that when the child support starts? Is that also when you can deport the mother because she's carrying a U.S. citizen? Can I insure a six-week fetus and collect it if I miscarry? Just figure if we're going here, we should go all in. And that, that is one of the most intelligent statements of the day. You know, that's not how they think, though. That's not how they think. This is not about really uh, caring about that fetus. We don't care about children in America. We don't. If you doubt it, just look at how they fund schools. We don't care about kids. We don't. Now, individuals care about kids, but the powers, the plutocracy, don't give a damn about kids. The rich don't even care about their own kids in the aggregate. It's about the mighty dollar. E2247, Philadelphia drawn by Ida and school support refused to, superintendent refused to close schools even when the city flooded and evacuated. It's amazing, isn't it? Eric Hayes, China has done lots of harm to countries. Egberto, what the hell are you talking about? You are propping up China and now China will rob Taiwan. Again, simplistic thinking. Please tell me what did I say that was incorrect. Please tell me. What if, if you're going to make a statement, tell me what did I say that is incorrect. I'll repeat for everybody else that are just coming to hear. China is a capitalist, communist country. Capitalism has nothing to do with political system. It's a capitalist, communist country. While America was around the world blowing stuff up in Iraq, in Afghanistan, while we were busy giving tax cuts to the wealthy, etc., etc., China was building up its cities. If you doubt it, go to the Shanghai airport. Go to all the Chinese airport in their cities and compare it to ours. If you want to make a change, at least one must be educated about what's going on around the world. Also, go to Kenya and all the countries in Africa and Latin America. See what they're doing there. Yes, they're, they're not doing these countries any favor, but these countries' citizens are riding on freeways and highways now built by Chinese, and half the time they bring the Chinese in to build them. People. People. Though that's the fact. You want to change it, you elect people that will think that America needs to do what's right for its people. Because we are not doing that. Now, Eric Berto, why don't we pay the criminals, huh, like California is thinking of a good idea. My God, they really have, uh, they really, you really believe everything you read in right-wing stuff. Uh, my, Brian Manor, 10K bounty would violate HIPAA. Hey, I never thought about that one, Brian Miner. I never thought about that one. That's, that's, oh, so let them sue and then you counter sue on HIPAA and you make more than on that $10,000. Brian Miner, you're a smart dude. Uh, let's see. Michael Rodnin says, Egberto, one more for the screen. Rodnin, let's see. Okay, that can go to the screen. Carlos Chapman says, I, I got it. I got it. It's on the screen. All right, what else we got here? And I, then I have to go to the videos pretty soon. Uh, E2247 says, two days after Hurricane Ida wrecked the Gulf Coast, the Biden administration has bowed to industry pressure and offered up 80 million acres of Gulf of Mexico oil and gas leasing. Wow, I didn't read that one. Send uh, E2247, when you get something like that, uh, I'd like to request, if possible, that you follow uh, Michael Rudnan's lead and throw a link in there so we can all have 
some sort of reference point to those things, but that is great information. Thank you, brother. That's 125,000 square miles of C, the same square miles as 354 by 354. Amazing. Illinois, from Wacogan to Wisconsin line to Paducah, Paducah, Kentucky line. Yeah, I hear you. All right, my internet was down overnight yesterday. No big deal. All right, Nanette Bird-Smith says, storm surge and flash floods can be deadly. Yes, they can. Eric Hayes, billions, you are worried about what? about the $4 trillion being shoved down taxpayers' throats with budget uh, process. I guess you forgot that we spent $8 trillion to blow things up and kill people, huh? I guess uh, that doesn't matter, right? All right, let's continue. Earth Justice filed a lawsuit to challenge an incredibly reckless decision by Biden. That's a good thing. Uh, no dog bones for human animals come that kill people. Uh, good. So I, that, does that mean, Eric... That you are going to vote out all the Republicans in, uh, in the Texas legislature? Hey, folks, we just got news. Eric Hayes, our... Uh, uh, by the way, Eric Hayes is honestly a friend of mine, all right? He's a, he's a conservative friend of mine. But guess what Eric Hayes just did with his words? Here's what Eric Hayes says. Eric Hayes says, uh, No dog bones for human animals come that kill people. Which means if he honestly believes that, he is going to vote out every single Republican in the House. And, well, he can only vote for one in the House and the Senator that does not support health care that's already available to us. The Medicaid expansion to the affordable care that they refuse to give uh, Texans, which kills several hundred Texans every year. Thank you very much, Eric. I'm going to be dependent on your vote and I'm going to be dependent on you selling that to others as well. Tommy Cruz, women have the right not to get pregnant. What about the father's choice to have the baby stay alive? When a father is able to carry a fetus, he can have a right. Until, until we give men, the, until we put the restrictions on men's bodies, that natural selection has put on women's bodies, then you can have a word. But until that, shut the hell up. It's a woman's choice. You don't tell any woman what she can do to her body. Let somebody try to tell you what you can do about your penis or what, what you, uh, you would, it would be a different story. You notice that they don't, when, the first time we created birth control, it's to, to, to go into your body, it was for women. How comes we didn't try to dis make the hormones of men such that it could not impregnate a woman? You know why? Because we don't want changes to our body, but we don't mind changing a woman's body. It's not ours. It's a patriarchal society. A patriarchal society that must end. Eric Hayes, China building things and you think that is great? If they're building stuff, why, why isn't it great if they're building things? Why isn't that great? The lease sales, uh, okay, I'll, I'll leave that one. Hi, everyone. Welcome aboard, Rose. Uh, E2247 says, Gulf Coast communities, coastal communities, and, and thousands of whales, sea turtles, dolphins, oyster species in danger. Yes, they are. Uh, para ver, para ver, para ver. Uh, elect, elect, I, I haven't been to Shanghai in a while. The last place I went in China was Xi'an. And I also went to, um, to Hong Kong before it got turned over. Uh, er, er, let's see, elect Biden who likes and won't hold China accountable, if that's what you think. Deborah John, welcome aboard. Uh, Peggy, welcome aboard. Oh, no, that, that's not Peggy. That is the no-name person. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Eric Hayes, don't twist words that you know was not implied on your messages. What I'm trying to say is if you don't, if, if, when, I, if when I repeat that you are going to unelect Republicans in the House and the Senate in Texas, if you don't do that, then the words that you use is hypocritical. And I know, my brother, you're not a hypocrite. You're my friend. And you believe in the words that you say. So I know you're going to vote appropriately, sir. Seriously, what the hell is this? Do any men believe that it is in a nut inside a woman that they own that? Thank you. Thank you. Good point. All right. Uh, Bridge MCP. Hi, all. Old woman here fighting the same fight we won. I know. I know. I know. All right. Here we go. First video. I want you guys to listen to this keenly, brothers and sisters. When you don't have the data, it is understandable that one can 
really allow their ideology to drive them. But when the data is there, when the data is apparent, what would cause one not to change a behavior, especially if one claims to be a, tr a pro-life person? I want you to listen to this and then let's take it on the other side. This is serious and it is something that we should want to help those who somehow in their minds remain in that fog. Check this out and then we'll take it on the other side. There's been a lot of anecdotal evidence and, and just the evidence of maps, if you look at them, from the beginning of this latest Delta wave of COVID that it's falling most heavily on Republican areas and Republican voters. I mean, look at this map of the outbreak. You can see how much worse it is in states across the South, the states where Donald Trump won handling. Now we have concrete data that puts a fine point on how much this has become a pandemic of Republican areas. Christopher Ingram is a former data reporter for The Washington Post. He currently writes a newsletter about the data shaping and informing our lives. Yesterday, he published this piece titled GOP COVID Policy is Killing GOP Voters. Now, first, let me say for different reasons, including how they report data, the chart does not include Nebraska, Florida, Alaska, or any counties with fewer than 10,000 people, because that data can get very noisy. But it does account for about 87% of the total U.S. population. Ingram found that since July 1st, about when this last wave began, in counties where Trump got less than 20% of the 2020 presidential vote, on average, there have been fewer than five COVID deaths for every 100,000 people. That's that blue line there. In counties where Trump more of the, won more of the vote but still lost, uh, that number only ticks up a little. So those are sort of deep blue and fairly blue areas. As you get to counties where Trump won a higher percentage of votes, the death toll also just gets higher and higher. And finally, uh, in counties where nearly everyone voted for Trump, there were nearly 15 COVID deaths for every 100,000 people. That is more than three times as many people dying from COVID as in those most pro-Biden counties. That chart brought me up short. It gives some real empirical weight to the evidence we've seen for months and months and months that the Delta wave is, is wreaking havoc disproportionately in red America. And again, this is largely, not entirely, but largely preventable. It is happening because the agenda of the Trump MAGA Republican Party has been, by and large, to ignore the risks of COVID refuse to protect yourself, others from it, and when people die, it was freedom or something, you know? Now, there's been really notable exceptions. We praised them on this show, the governor of Vermont, the governor of Ohio, and Republican officials up and down the chain, but that general thrust of attitude has been the defining one in the heart of the Republican base. And that's the issue. Now, the cynical view would be, well, you know what? It turns out that Darwin's theory works just fine. Since uh, that's how they want to be, there will be less of them, and as such, the system would cleanse itself of irresponsibility, cleanse itself of that behavior. But that is not the way progressives should ever think. But not only that, as they go, as they continue their misbehavior, their irresponsibility, their killing ways, it also affects many of us who will be infected by their irresponsibility. So I think we have to tackle this in a more humane manner. We got to tackle this in a way that says, in as much as these people make us irate, in as much as we can see those people who are really causing the most harm, makes, we don't want to address them. I think we have to bite the bullet and say, we have to because we are humane, and we have to because it is the right thing to do, not to just save them, but to save us as well. And I want to add something. My good friend, uh, Tommy Cruz. I've been on Tommy Cruz's show before. I really like Tommy Cruz. But Tommy, Tommy Cruz, uh, many, too often, have, have bought the Kool-Aid. Uh, he has bought the Kool-Aid uh, from the Republican Party. Uh, he's a small businessman, very successful businessman, does good stuff. And he's a very good person, just misled by the Republican Party. Here's what he says. 
And yet, you want people to force a vaccine into their body. My body, my choice. Keep your hands off my penis. That's what he said. Okay? And that's good. That's all right. But here's the deal. Impregnating a woman is between you and that woman without externalities. In other words, that woman being pregnant is not going to have a deadly effect on other people she comes in contact with nor you as well. Now, when it comes to a woman's body, we are telling you, do leave her body alone. When it comes to vaccines, we are saying, if you don't want to take a vaccine, we, we, could, we can tell you the following. If you want to be around other people, we don't want you around if you don't have a vaccine. So you can stay vaccine-less. If you are willing to live in your isolated area with those who think like you or who want to be like you and infect each other. Because when you breathe, you affect me. When that pregnant woman breathes, she doesn't affect me. What she does with her body doesn't affect me. Okay? Now, whatever it is that's growing inside of her, and I'm a very humane person, until it is legally born, that is between she and her God. I, that's all I know. I am too dumb to know otherwise or to try to impose. And the one thing I do know is all those politicians in general are dumber than all of you that are right here watching us and doing this and participating. We know that. So, I'm saying in the aggregate, because we meet a lot of them. I'm not talking about the progressive ones, of course. Okay? So, so that is the whole idea, Brother Tommy. That is the whole idea. All right, let me get back to reading some of these things right here real quick. Like, uh, para ver donde estoy, donde estoy, donde estoy, donde estoy. Hi, all. Old woman here fighting the same old fights we won. First of all, Bridge MCP, you're not an old woman. You know, you're a beautiful woman. You're not old. And you're, you're getting stuff done. Michael Rudd, no, that's to somebody else. Sadly, so sadly, I really don't care about these idiots anymore. I want you to care, uh, I want you to care, Breach. Uh, once we start, once we start not caring about our fellow humans, that is where society is going to end as we know it. So here's what, here's what I do. Uh... You know, <laughs> Tommy says, learn to, learn to laugh a little bit, brother. Tommy, you know I love you too, man. So come on. I'm, I'm laughing with you, brother. All right. Here's the, here's the thing, Breach. I, I, I want to pontificate a little bit here. Because I'm teaching myself this, and I have to remind myself this whenever I get mad with some of my right-wing brothers. I have to remember to still love, right? Um, if we don't do that, the plutocracy who runs everything. I'm talking about the money people, the people who control this entire society. They depend on you and me, Hayden, uh, Mike, uh, Hayden, the, the Eric Hayes of the world, the Tommy Cruz of the world. And we can't do that because then they win because that's what they need. What we have to do is, is, uh, ult is continuously work with Cruz and meaning Tommy Cruz, not, not the senator, he's a long goner, and Eric Hayes, so that we can work on things together to beat the plutocracy. We are better than that. All right, let's continue here. Um, para ver, para ver, para. Carl Cox says, the profile politicians are not pro, pro-life politicians are not pro-life. They only want death. They don't believe in affordable health care for all. And you know what? You, Carl, you hit the number. If you don't support the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act and all these other issues, then why the hell would you support the vaccine and wearing masks? You really are a pro-death party. And you're going to see some of that that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, let's see who else I have here. Eric Hayes, why is it that therapeutic COVID-related things aren't suggested and only vaccine? Again, that's not true. We have a lot of therapies that are already in use and they are promoted. Steroid therapy. Uh, monoclonal, monoclonal therapy, 
uh, uh, there are a lot of other therapies that are being given right now, but they're, they, they pass science muster. But these other therapies are, are, are making a few people a lot of money on your backs because they think you're stupid. That's all. That's all. Nothing more. Okay, let's see. Welcome aboard, Paul Fleming, my brother. Uh, who else we got here? Tommy Cruz, make sure to wear a mask when outside. I bet Tommy Cruz wears a mask. I know him. Carl Cox, right on, Egberto. Tommy Cruz, learn how to laugh a little like Egg Burrito. Yeah, you always called me Egg Burrito. You called me Egg Burrito on your show. By the way, you, you need to get me on your show so I can do a little politics. Let's do 10 minutes of politics on your show. I need to reach your audience and get them thinking like I am. I laughed while I typed my last comment. I know that. All right, let's continue here. Bridge, you are here. Heard challenge. Oh, thank you, Bridge. Folks, please, if you are on YouTube, hey, Tommy, are you a supporter, a subscriber to Politics Done Right? Hit that join button right now, Tommy. Become a subscriber. I want to put your name on the screen. Come on, Tommy Cruz. I have a lot of conservative supporters, and they're right here in the room right now. I love all my, I love all my peeps. So click that join button, become a supporter. And let's keep on keep this thing going, baby. Anyhow, folks, uh, honest enough, um, I can't do this without you. I, I need your support to be able to continue doing this full time. This is a 16-hour job, 16-hour a day job, even with my spinning. And when I spin, I only sleep four hours, but that's fine. Um, so please, support us. Click that join button to become a supporter of the show. Al alternative methods of support as well can be found at politicsunright.com slash support. Politicsunright.com slash support has many ways to support our program. We need it, we need you to. You can get all our books that you see, books that I've written, and I can guarantee you will get a lot out of these books. Politicsunright.com slash books. Politicsunright.com slash books. You can also uh, go to our store, politicsunright.com slash store politicsunright.com slash store to get our t-shirts, our face mask, all that good stuff we have at our store. And I'm going to put, today I'm going to put the Patreon on. Again, I need more patrons, please. Uh, if you can be a patron or a, or a supporter, uh, go ahead. Uh, there, uh, there is the Patreon and here is the PayPal. Here is the PayPal. Okay. All right, folks. I have another good video for you. And I want you to listen to this video in detail. I beg. And Tommy Cruz, stick around for the video too. Uh, my, all of my conservatives, I want you to listen to this video. And I want you to listen to it in the spirit in which I say it. You know that I want everybody to be not on the same page thinking alike, but supporting humanity in the same fashion. Let's get busy. Former Republican Congressman David Jolly, uh, Republican Congressman from uh, Florida, made a great point on the Chris Hayes show, and he, he articulated exactly what Republicans represent now, what the Republican Party is all about, what the platform is that they're going to run against. They're not going to run about against the budget deficits. They're not going to run against the huge debt. They're not going to run against supposedly fiscal responsibility, something that they were nobody can ever accuse them of accomplishing or attempting to accomplish. None of that. No, nothing that actually makes sense. They're not, they're not campaigning on infrastructure. They're not campaigning on doing things to help Americans, right? They're campaigning against the, the major, their, their major things. Guns, Democrats are trying to take... I tell you what, let's go ahead and listen to uh, Jolly, and then we'll take it on the other side. I want you to check this out, and then we'll take it on the other side. But, but the other thing to me, David, is, is on this election security thing, which isn't even an issue. It's, an, it's not an issue. But yeah. I have noted that that is now an issue. If you look at... If you go on YouTube and you watch Republican candidates in 20, 2022, that's one of the three or four bullet points is election security. Yeah, because, Chris, you have to think like a Republican, okay, for just a moment. Republicans don't care about your public health. They don't actually care about election integrity. They don't actually care about the abortion issue. What they care about is winning elections. And what they know is that to win elections, you have to focus on wedge issues that we consider high intensity, low information, right? Elections are not going to be decided over the nuances of our policy in Afghanistan, over 
fuel standards for vehicles. They're decided on these high intensity, low information wedge issues. So on abortion, Republicans don't want you to have access to them. On guns, Republicans want you to have it. They're going to tell you Democrats want to take it away. On COVID, Republicans are for your freedom. And on elections, Republicans don't want black and brown people voting because it hurts Republicans' chances to win. And that's it. That's all they're selling. And, and the thread that keeps but all that together is the demonization of the left and that Democrats are the evil actors that are going to disrupt those wedge issues for you. And that's what it's all about. But before I continue with the program, I just want to say, for those of you who like our videos, please go ahead and click on that up there and become a subscriber, become a member, become a member of what we call the PDR Posse. Because you know what? In order to continue doing this, we need your support. But anyhow, I, this is very, very important. Democrats are constantly worried right now about losing 2022. And I am sitting here in very red Texas, and I see the issues in Harris County, a blue district, but I also see it in, in Jefferson County, in Wilmington County, Washington County, which are red. And I see places where the things Democrats support, they can go over there and sell, not to ask, ask these Republicans to become Democrats, but to ask these Republicans to hold their nose and vote in their interests, keep their Republicanism. Just vote for the people in the, in, that support what they need right now. Because here's the deal. As Jolly said, they're running on guns. They're lying about Democrats taking away your guns. We're not doing that. They're lying about uh, some. They, they want to force women into the Taliban domain. We are going to control your body. We're going to control all of this. Most Republicans are not there either. They want to talk about freedom. Freedom to what? Die? Not wear a mask or an injection? We don't even have to go there. We just have to go there and tell them we are for you. We want to support you and ensure that you stay healthy. And election security. All these people know the election is really secure. But you know what? Even if they don't think it is secure, go out and tell them that we will make sure the election is secure as well. But here's the deal. And I spoke to a former candidate for Texas Senate a few days ago, and I said, look, one of the problems we have is we cede the rural areas to Republicans. During this COVID pandemic, hospitals that are closed in the rural areas, hospitals that are overloaded in the rural areas, hospitals that are in in the rural areas are in that state because of their representatives supporting that type of health care. We can go out there. We don't have to talk about Medicare for all. We don't even have to talk about the. We just have to talk about the policies they support close the hospital. Do you want your hospital? What they're supporting will not give you the hospital. We will give you a hospital. So why aren't Democrats, and like I said in, in my title, we need to lean in to what we believe in. Because what we believe in is what all Americans want. Lean into what we believe in. Go into Brenham, Texas. Go into Yoakum, Texas. Go into Giddens, Texas. And start talking to these people. I'm not talking about ceding it to, to Republicans. I'm talking about going and say, don't like me. I don't, I'm not asking you to like me. I am not asking you to become a Democrat. I'm not asking you to become a progressive. But I want to give you a hospital. But I want to make sure you have doctors. But I want to make sure your farm is successful by not giving the subsidies to ADM, but giving you the subsidies. I want to do this for you to get your vote. I want to earn your vote. I'm not trying to change who you are. I want to earn your vote. We don't do that. I saw Bernie Sanders going into Indiana. He got 2,500 people to come out. We need to engage and not assume. When people talk a whole lot about those, uh, those people in the elite towers, right? We cannot give them that running game. We have to get down to their level. We have to engage them. And, and people will say, oh, but they're going to throw stones at us or they're going to call us you old libtards or whatever. Yeah, they do. You know what they call me for doing this show? People would call me up and call me the N-word. And by the time the, the conversation is done, half of the times I get an email that says, oh my God, I'm sorry. How can I support? 
let me tell you something, folks. I, one of the things that we have allowed the plutocracy to do, and, and the plutocracy is not just Democrat. I mean, not just Republican. It's Democrat. It's everything. They are the ones that need us at each other's throats. Jolly understands the problem. I don't know if he understands the solution. The solution will always be engagement. But if you expect engagement to be a love fest where somebody is going to say, oh, thank you for showing me the light, that is not engagement. That is not reality. Engagement is going into places where they hate your guts. And when you leave there, they may not like you. They might not even respect you. But they may listen to you. And I tell you folks, this election, 2022, if we just concentrate on one areas, one set of areas that we know we're going to win, especially the way this country is split up in between, we're, we're minority rule. Two senators in North Dakota and two senators in, 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 in California. Come on now. The only way for the, us to make big strides in this country is to be the 50 state solution that, uh, that used to be talked about. It's more than the 50 state solution. It's the all county solution. It is the all precinct solution. And that is what's going to give us the win. So join us. Let's get the ball rolling and let's do what we must do to win 2022. 2022 should be, uh, based on the way, the way the Republican Party is behaving now, 2022 should be a landslide for us. But we, have to, we can't have, assume it's going to be ours. We got to go take it. We've got to go take it. Ain't nothing gonna break my stride. Bionic Chronic. I just love that name. Bionic Chronic. Welcome aboard. No Biden. No, no, no Biden means cancel oil leases in Gulf because oil killing North America at very least. E2247 says, no, no, Keshagesh by Buffy. Uh, no, not. Oh, okay. I, I don't understand. Okay, replying. Maywood also it prevents them. Why are people catching COVID and dying too? May would also, if it prevents, then why? Oh, God. You know what is difficult? If, if I say, if, if I, I'm, Eric, I'm going to try to get this, and I hope you understand this. Uh, if I say I created a vaccine, and it has a, I'm going to go low. It has a 60% efficiency, a 60% workability. So that means if a thousand people get, uh, if a thousand people are in the building, about 600 will never get COVID. And the others who get COVID, most of them will live. But if I don't have the vaccine, all of them get COVID and many of them die. Should we, should we give a vaccine? Of course we should. Of course we should. If you're really a pro-life person... You will say, I will do whatever. I will save those lives that can be saved with vaccines. And we'll take other measures to try to save the others by finding a way for them not to get infected. It's, it's not difficult. It's not rocket science. That is how we need to think. Um, yesterday, I wanted to show you uh, something from, uh, from um, a veteran. This veteran uh, had the best statement on the Afghanistan war. I didn't find it. It was found by our good PDR Posse brother, uh, Norman Reynolds. So let me go ahead and play that one. And uh, I want you to take it at the other side. Because this this veteran, uh, his name is, uh, what is his name again? Uh, gosh, I forgot his name. Now, Lucas Kuntz. Lucas Kuntz had a statement that he made to... Uh, Stephanie Rule, that I thought was one of the best. So let's go ahead and play that, and we'll take it on the other side. Testing. Oh, can you guys hear that? Evacuation and 
very dangerous conditions that he's seen are doing absolutely the bravest, most impossible. Oh. All right, sorry about that, guys. Let me go ahead and uh, I need to restart it. That, that is actually my fault. Let's go ahead and restart that. There we go. I do want to play for you what Congressman Peter Meyer, a veteran who went to Kabul last week, what he said about his trip. Watch this. I mean, we've seen some of the best of the American people, especially in the last two weeks, some of the best of our troops on the ground and the heroic way they're carrying out this mission. But we've also seen some of the worst of American leadership. Do you agree? Look, Mike, uh, well, I absolutely agree about the troops. Uh, the people who are over there doing this evacuation in very dangerous conditions, as you've seen, are doing absolutely the bravest, most impossible job in the world, and I'm very proud of them. But as far as the overall picture goes, like, here's the deal. All these people are playing the blame game right now over what's happening right now because they want to distract us from the fact that we spent 20 years $2.3 trillion and 2,500 U.S. service member lives over there for absolutely nothing. Like the same people right now who are saying one more day, one more month, one more dollar are the same people who said that for 20 years. And what we saw last week, that what that means is one more Marine. It means one more Marine over and over again. It reminds me of the saddest day of my entire life, which was standing on the flight line in Helmand, Afghanistan in the middle of the night watching the fallen body of one of the members of my battalion loaded onto a transport plane to go home. These people are trying to keep us focused on what's happening right now because they have been telling the American people that it was worthwhile to spend $2.3 trillion over there for absolutely nothing while they've been refusing to spend that much building up our own country here at home and we can't let them win. We have to fight back against that narrative because it's wrong and it's just part of the systematic institutional dishonesty that has us in this position right now. I do want to play for you. Now, think about that. He is a veteran. He was there. By the way, uh, they, meteor, meteor Blades at Daily Coast on Native American Heritage Day. No, no, Keshangesh was published 27 November 2009, and its message applies still today. I love Meteor Blades. Actually, Meteor Blades is a good friend of mine, and I see Meteor Blades once a year in person at Netroots. And if they don't cancel the physical Netroots, I'll be seeing him in Washington, D.C. in October, uh, October 9th, I believe. So uh, we'll see. Michael Rudnan says, you don't, want, you don't see any videos of mass shooting that the Taliban took credit for. You don't see videos of kidnapped Americans with, with uh, newspapers in front of them. Lawrence Sim says, each state has defense contractors that keeps the industrial military complex operating. Meteor Blade's message is still true today. It's a strong message. I will read that later on, but I've read just about everything Meteor Blades has written. He's, he's a hell of a writer, and he curated a lot of stuff at Daily Coast. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else we got here. We are at 3.56, so we're almost done here. Anybody wants me to say anything or wants me to do anything real quickly, throw it down to the bottom of the... Uh, go ahead and add that to the feed right now. On average, 99 out of 100 people who die from COVID are unvaccinated. Vaccines aren't perfect, but you don't want to lower your death risk by two orders of magnitude. It, I mean, it, it is not difficult at all. Vaccines work. Uh, some people may fall through the cracks because of something that they have. Egberto, again, Taliban want their dissidents gone, exiled. We want to help those dissidents get out. Why do you think the Taliban hasn't attacked since we started leaving? Because they wanted us gone. It's a, it's, it's a statement of fact. Doesn't the Taliban support ISIS as a cover for what Ruddin just mentioned? I mean, again, we want to go around in circles about ISIS and Taliban and all of that. All we need to do is to get the hell out of these places. And let them take care of their business. Whether the Taliban likes ISIS and ISIS like, I don't really care. Protect these guys, I mean, protect our entries from people like this. And we won't have a problem. We don't need to spend a lot of money in other people's lands. Stay in our own land. And protect our own land. That's all we need to do. That's all we need to do. Nothing more, nothing less. Anyway, folks, please, 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 uh, if you are just joining us, click on that join button. Become a part of our PDR Posse. I still have a couple minutes if you join right now for me to throw that onto the screen. So consider joining the PDR Posse by clicking that join button. You can also provide us with support by going to politicsandright.com support. 
politicsandright.com slash support. And uh, you can also get our books at politicsandright.com slash books, politicsandright.com slash books, or shop at our store at politicsandright.com slash store. Petition Queen, welcome aboard, says, I agree, and so do most Americans. End the endless wars. Agreed. May Wood says, those, the people who are dying are the unvaccinated. No vaccine is 100% effective, but those few who are getting breakthrough infections are getting very mild cases, usually not needing hospitalization. Exactly. Well, folks, we are at the end of the show. I want to thank you guys so kindly for being a part. I really couldn't do it without you. And you know what? Uh, if you notice the last few days, I, I have interviews to play, but I haven't played them because we are at a time where people are doing a lot of commenting. And I want this show to be as interactive as possible. If you guys were the type that used the telephone, I would put the telephone up more often for you to call in. Uh, but I want to keep I, I want to keep it more interactive to cover a lot of what you're thinking. It's not enough for me to just have an agenda and talk, but for you to engage and direct where you want us to go. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that, unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is politics done right.